guy is to be the prospect that people touted him to become, those will be the years when he really comes into his own. Hello and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always have something to say about the Blue Jays. I'm your host, Adam Peddle. And I'm your host, Nick Blaylog. And today, we're going to be talking about, hopefully, a big, bright future piece for the Blue Jays that will lead us to our inevitable 10-year, decade-long run <laughs> of back-to-back World Series mm-hmm. and Hall of Fame performances across the board. <laughs> Yeah, that would be so great. <laughs> the guy that we're talking about is Big Nate, also known as Nate Pearson, our upcoming flamethrower. Before we get into that, though, please make sure to like and subscribe and comment on all of our videos. It means so much to us. Also, a big shout out, oh yeah, to us mm. for hitting 100 subscribers. Oh yeah. So, thank you guys for thank you. checking us out. Seriously, thanks guys. Even like subscribing, hitting the notification button, it literally means so much. I looked at analytics the other day and 44% of our viewers are subscribers, which is huge, that's mm. huge. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys. Really good actually. Yeah, so thank you guys for always tuning in every week and every day, hopefully, uh, <laughs> that we come out with you guys. So. Nate Let's Pearson. talk <laughs> Nate. So mm-hmm. he came out this season. Uh, you know, he's be, he was being touted as like our number one prospect for good reason. You know, he put up some exceptional numbers in the minors. Some of those numbers were uh, oh, last year in 2019, mm-hmm. he pitched 101 innings, 101.2 innings. So if you're being exact, uh, he had an ERA of 2.3, uh, 119 Ks through those 101 innings so Mm -hmm. definitely a bit of a k machine which i love to see because you know we don't we're missing kind of a piece like that right now on the jays and he had a whip of uh 0.885 those were that was like from a double a and triple a like very good numbers Mm -hmm. across the board and to add on that his scouting grade so for scouting grade in minor league systems um it's ranked at 80 right so if you're 80 you're the best zero you're you shouldn't even be there (laughs) but he had a 2019, in 2019 he had a scouting grade on each one of his pitches. His fastball being ranked 75. Mm-hmm. I'll just go on the list here, and this was kind of interesting to kind of lead into what he's done this season. Right. His slider's been 60, his curveball is 55, his changeup is 50, and his control is 45. Mm-hmm. So almost half of what a scouting grade would be. Yeah, he's definitely like his biggest and best touted skill is his velocity. It's mm-hmm. always been his velo. You mm-hmm. know, I watched a inspirational video of him talking about how one day he's gonna hit one ten <laughs> on the radar. <laughs> you know, and it's good to aim yeah, high. Like, yeah, that'd be that'd be great, but like your arm would literally yeah. be rubber. Don't hurt yourself, um, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, like I think it was like because he hit what one hundred five like back in twenty eighteen or something like that. Some or one hundred four, yeah. I think. I, I think it was one hundred five. Yeah, no. it was definitely one hundred five, and he hit it on the radar gun, and it was through a like minor league mm. all star game. Right. Right. Um. So like when that happened, it was like holy moly, holy crap, like, who is this guy? Like, mm-hmm. why is he not in the majors? That, that put him on the radar as the number, ranked number yeah, nine prospect the this radar. year. Um, yeah. Number one for us. Like this, So this guy, definitely big, highly touted. Now, let's talk about his four games that he played for us this year. Yeah, and man, they weren't great. They weren't great. This no. first game, his first game, I was so happy. He had five yeah. scoreless innings against, I think it was Max Scherzer on yeah, the Nats. Yeah. And I was he like, went wow. went toe-to-toe with Mad Max. Yeah, like this guy's, this guy's got this stuff. For but, sure. But then after that, it kind of fell off the table. He ended up getting injured inevitably, and he's on the aisle now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and his, uh, his four games. Elbow he, tightness, by the way. Like apparently, tightness. they're saying that it's not supposed to be a huge deal. However... Uh, like, I did read something being like, uh, we haven't heard anything from mm-hmm. Nate Pearson in a while, which is mildly concerning. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't want to get too deep into that, but elbow tightness. Mm-hmm. Continue. Yeah. And then his ERA inflated to 6.61. Ouch. Um, and in 16 innings, he still got 14 strikeouts. So the strikeouts didn't hurt too badly. Mm-hmm. And a whip of 1.53. Mm-hmm. Um, another interesting stat I wanted to point out here, I'm um, right. seeing who was doing damage to him the most. And his splits against lefty batters... Because he has an ERA of 10.8. Righty's only 3.72. So 
he again he is a right-handed pitcher, so that would make sense against a lefty when he's thrown mm-hmm. into their into their bat plane. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a little interesting to see that he's struggling against the lefties. Yeah, it is a, definitely a short short sample size. Mm-hmm. So you know, like uh, yeah, some like a lot of these stats. Like I'm I'm gonna whip out a stat in a second, and like I don't want to you know f- focus on it too too much just because like mm-hmm. it is a small sample. It's interesting size, to think about. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, like one thing um, about him, like his fastball velocity was was great. Like it started mm-hmm. out like not exactly where he was at, but started getting there as the starts went on, and it ranked in the 89th percentile in the MLB. And he still, even in his last start, wasn't really hitting what we know that he can hit. Like this kid can regularly hit triple digits, you know, without even breaking a sweat. So the velo was there. The problem was the command just yeah. wasn't, and and primarily it for me anyways. Watching the games, it was on his fastball. Yeah. Um. He simply just like he could blow it past you, but you know he was shooting it you know way too high or like out of the zone, and and people yeah. weren't offering at it. He was overthrowing too hard. He's trying to aim his pitches. He even admitted he's trying way too hard to throw accurately, mm-hmm. and that's going to get in your head, and that's going to just honestly reduce your velocity. Reduce your command in total. You got to trust your pitches. Completely, completely agree. And what's super interesting about that is then I looked at, and you know, on Baseball Savant, they have a section talking about the batting average against your pitches. And it wasn't actually the fastball that was doing him damage, it was the slider. Which is, you know, you're wondering, okay, well, why is that? Because typically the slider is, you know, the fastball is supposed to be on it. Almost all pitchers, the easily most easy one to hit. Like people often wait on that. His slider, people were hitting that. They were getting a batting average off him of 260. I think what was happening was people were recognizing this kid cannot find the zone right now mm-hmm. with his fastball. Let's all wait on the slider yeah. and smack it out. And yeah. and that's exactly what was going on. I think it's interesting Interesting to note too, like when you're throwing that slider, especially if you're struggling against a left-handed batter, and you're throwing that slider, that slider is going to break towards the barrel of the bat. That's true. So that could do a lot of, that could be the reason why he's, yeah, lefty, mm-hmm. the lefty stats is inflated. Now, granted, I don't know the, exactly how many lefties hit sliders off him, but mm-hmm. simply it is what it is. That's why you don't do righty versus lefty matchups. So I, yeah. you know, I think this guy, his biggest thing, his biggest skill, we've talked about it, we mentioned it, is his fastball. And he needs to get command of his fastball, trust his velocity in order to achieve greatness in the MLB. Because then once you command that fastball, now you got people sitting on fastball. That's when that slider is going to be the most effective. Exactly. You know, and I was looking at, because, you know, I know we've made comparisons other people, you know, talking on our Instagram have made comparisons. I think even, mm-hmm. you know, like professional baseball analysts uh, or analysts, sorry, have made comparisons from this kid to a Justin Verlander yeah. style of pitcher. Justin Verlander in 2019, granted, you know, he was a incredible, like he won the mm-hmm. Cy Young. We're not mm-hmm. expecting this from this kid just yet. Yeah. But his slider was giving off a batting average of 119. Yeah. Um, and that is because he was establishing the fastball. Yeah. And it's also interesting to note that, you know, the pitches, the like, because Baseball Spawn also shows this, the percentage of pitches that you throw and how often you do it. And Pearson and Verlander is shockingly similar mm. uh, on all accounts as far as the yeah. fastball, the slider, the changeup. They're very similar pitching profiles. And it's funny that you talk about Verlander because. Uh, I look back and I wanted to be like, well, maybe Nate Pearson, you know, everyone goes through struggles at a young age. Right. Sure. And so I look back at Verlander's first year. He made his debut when he was 22 years old uh, in tw- 2005 with the with the Tigers. He only pitched two games. Yeah. And he had a ERA of 7.15. Now, that's only two games, right. you know. Maybe you, you say like the same with Pearson, uh, 6.61, four games. He struggled. And I was like, maybe he has another struggling year until he figured out. Mm-hmm. Well, no, ever since 2006, he's been dominant. He had a ERA of 3.63. And ever since, he's just like a little uh, MVP, yeah, Hall of Famer, Cy Young yeah. Award winner. Every perennial, single year. perennial all-star <laughs> for sure. So. so we can hope that maybe next year and, uh, Nate comes back. Yeah, with, and, with and Nate Pearson, I don't think we mentioned it. He is 24 years old mm-hmm. right now. Uh, so he is definitely uh, still young as far as pitching goes, not as young as Verlander was, but mm. still very young. 
and his contract, like we have him until 2025. So awesome. we have lots and lots of time for this kid to develop. You know, a lot of people, us included, have said 2022, 2023, 2024. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be our major years. And if this guy is to be the prospect that people touted him to become, those will be the years when he really comes into his own. So yeah. we got to hope that the command comes up. We got to hope. And I and actually, I want to talk to you, too. Like, mm -hmm. um, like, what do you feel about him coming back? as a reliever when he's healthy. I 100% support that decision. Me too. Because, look, we already we traded for literally three starting pitching. <laughs> the rotation's full now. Now we are struggling to get people into the game, uh, which is a good problem. Uh, but Nate Pearson needs to refocus his stuff. I think he'd be excellent out of the bullpen throwing 100. You yeah. know? Like, he, he'd be perfect for the bullpen, put him in low leverage situations, give him one inning, get him out. I think it'll be great for his development. We saw it with Aaron Sanchez, who came up as a, a reliever in 2015 and eventually became a starter and, ha and had Cy Young abilities the very next season before his blister injury. But that's the pass. I think a similar strategy should be applied to Nate Pearson. Agreed. I think, too, that you know putting him in a reliever spot can take away some of that pressure, like you said, low leverage situations, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like stuff where we are behind, so he's not maybe, you know, he doesn't have the potential to blow up a game, but he has the potential to throw some good pitches, uh, you know, to get confidence with his stuff and to establish that fastball a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And this would be a great opportunity for him to get some reps, mm -hmm. get that confidence up, and then make next season, come back in, uh, and maybe as the starter, maybe now we're going to see what our starting pitching yep. rotation looks like then. But you know what? I, I think that uh, putting him as a reliever would be a great opportunity for us. Absolutely. Let's go, guys. All right, what do you guys think? So do you think Nate Pearson should come back as a reliever? Do you think Nate Pearson's going to maybe come back and do well, maybe get out of his head a little bit? What do you think about his starts? Let us know anything about Nate Pearson that you guys have been thinking about in the comments down below. Check us out on Spotify, Breaker, Anchor, Radio Public, Google Podcasts, also our Instagram. And again, please subscribe and comment. And thanks so much for watching, guys. Go Jays. Go! Go!